Um, what was interesting to me, it's a, lot, it's a lot like the other ones, but this also kind of became, kind of gathered like a little bit of social data because it was interesting to see who would stop and who wouldn't. And it was the younger people, um, you know, college age, young adults that would pass by. And um, there's a lot of older folks in this, this town. This is also Sweden again. And, but it was mothers with kids that would always walk up and say, hey, hey, what's going on? I, and, and, you know, she doesn't have a kid, she just has a bag, but, um, <laughs> but I don't know. I mean, most of them had kids. This is another project in London. Um, nice thing about doing work in London is since Banksy's there, and I think probably a few of you know who he is, he's sort of broken in their city um, in a way that maybe Winston-Salem hasn't been broken, broken yet. Um, so when this happened, I mean, people just jumped right in and had fun with it and, um, you know, this sort of stuff. Um, anyway, then we come to some of the more, more you know, light and fluffy stuff like this one. Um, <laughs> and, you know, just to kind of preface this with, this was actually, I was brought over uh, by uh, Sweden's uh, you know, government's funds, which, which was nice, of course, and I was doing a two-week uh, sort of teaching slash residency at a hip-hop school there, and the director was this kind of legendary graffiti artist. He even had his own stamp, which is kind of neat. And he just kind of gave me a carte blanche and said, you know, uh, the town's called Mama, Malmo, Malmo, and it's right across the river from Copenhagen, and Copenhagen has this sort of vibe of being very uh, contemporary, artsy, you know, just a lot mm -hmm. of great music and stuff, and stuff to do it. And on the flip side, Malmo, that's how you say it? Malmo, right, right. Um, it's got this sort of dusty feeling, and so he really kind of want his city dusted off. And um, so he was like, yeah, do whatever you like. And so I was like, how about this? And he was like, yeah, sure. And, you know, with this embed series, for me, it's always kind of been wanting to hide the face and hide the hands because I don't do hyperrealism to the extent that I actually do, you know, skin and hair like Dwayne, Dwayne Hansen did. Um, so this was just a possibility of a way to do things. And, you know, I thought it'd be enough to lighten it up by having these balloons kind of seeming like he's trying to pull him out of the water and save his life. And he was also set up, I had like water, empty water bottles in there to kind of float him, but try to make his body so, it, you know, it didn't look like he was fully submerged but it wasn't quite enough. <laughs> so, you know, this is talking about, uh, again, you know, we look at the human body, and, you know, this is another type of T-cell, you know, the fire, fire department, and you, you're really seeing the, you know, body, it's sort of a reaction, that, like, uh, you know, things happen, you really start to understand the process of how things work in the city. And, you know, also, in my defense, there was a bridge there, and, I, you know, I had a, a, a statue on the bridge of this girl with this big pink bare head and stuff, and so I thought I'd created a sort of surreal environment. But, you know, obviously when stuff like this happens, it makes it more, more real than surreal, because anybody watching it really does think something's happening. And, um, yeah, I mean, this happened. It's not something I would go out and repeat, and... You know, but I think a lot of what art is is testing the limits sometimes, and you know, and you know, also for the stage, I was talking about too. This definitely creates creates a stage. <laughs> this is another project I did with Greenpeace, and Greenpeace had this sort of way of doing things. Whenever they would go out and do a I think they call it actions, and they would always kind of brand it with Greenpeace. Like they actually went out and did a guerrilla installation, uh, got some really powerful projectors, like five or ten thousand lumens, and projected on the side of the Washington Monument, which is pretty major. And they had like some high water level, and it was something like I don't know, something catchy about you know global warming, and they didn't get any any media attention from it at all. And, you know, when I talked to him, I was like, well, maybe you shouldn't put 
Greenpeace on everything you do because then they know it's you and they know you guys just want to get media attention and uh, and they might just be sick sick of you, you know. But we did this installation and in DC this polar bear looking through the trash, which was supposed to be an analogy to, you know, polar bears are becoming homeless. I think it's pretty easy to get it. Um, but it got classified as a, a suspicious package. <laughs> you know, which is the first first time that's ever happened. And you know, they so they sent out, you know, Homer Simpson in his like blast suit. <laughs> and you know, this actually shut down a subway, it shut down an elementary school. And then and it's because it's Greenpeace, they're like, okay, let's do the next one in two days. And so we put another one on the National Mall and they shut down half the National Mall and another bomb squad. But since it wasn't branded with Greenpeace, um, this caused just, you know, just a crap load of like local TV news because, you know, they like that sort of thing. The local news love to find something like this that, especially if it can kind of polarize, some people like it, some people don't. And, and Greenpeace was able to leverage all that media um, and go on the news and say, well, this is what we did, this is why we did it. And so they were actually able to get that airtime to get their message out. So they were, they were quite happy about it. And the other Greenpeace cells, you know, uh, a lot of them have like repeated the same exact installation like in Poland and I think Mexico City and they're trying to do it in Austria now. So, you know, while some people say, hey, you're wasting the state's fund, this bomb squad could be at another bomb site, you know, um, doing this doing this kind of stuff. I mean, I say, well, yeah, but I don't know. I mean, uh, this is just more of the same. This is a project I did in, in Italy. It was like National Art Day. And again, you know, it's like government thing. And they're like, go do what you like. And you know, the funny thing is, is that I kind of stopped after that girl on the roof, just kind of going out and doing whatever I like, because I was like, hmm. You know, if I'm in the gnat flying around D.C., after a while, like, I'm going to get squashed. You know, cops are going to come to my door and be like, all right, we had enough. Um, come with us kind of deal. And, you know, and then ironically, at the same time, I start getting these invites from countries all over the world, uh, you know, just, just all through Europe. And so I was like, well, you know, if, if they want me to come, you know, they know what I do, and so this is what they'll get. You know, I like to say, you know, after things happen and you know organizers were like well we didn't know i'm like well you order french fries you get french fries and in this case you know again i, I try to place the sculpture look in a way that except for that one that they don't like look like they're dead um but they call 911 911 comes out i didn't see this but i would have been interested to see it the ambulance guy comes out finds out it's not real, gets pissed, and just stomps the sculpture to pieces, <laughs> and leaves it there. So that's kind of interesting. This is one I did in, in France. This was in January. And this one, this one happened. Someone didn't tell the fire department. They came out. But, you know, this one was... Uh, Mayor was like, I still love it. I still want you back. I'm curating a big uh, festival next year in the same city. And, you know, the mayor's comment was like, you know, my city is a big woman and you made her get up and dance. You know, <laughs> of course he had that the, the sleepy French accent when he said it, but. And I think we're almost done. Oh, this was a, uh, a sculpture 